Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz, and this is Ascension Presents. So one of the things that I will encounter on, on a regular basis is people who say either about themselves or about someone they love, I just lost my faith. Or they'll say about, you know, maybe one of their kids, my, yeah, my son or my daughter has lost their faith or my sibling has lost their faith. Um, I want to look at that idea, the concept of, is it possible to lose your faith? Now, a couple of things before that. One, it, is it possible to lose your salvation? Yes, obviously. Um, St. Paul even talks about this when he says, um, for this reason I drive my body and I train it for fear that after having preached to others, I myself might become disqualified. It's possible to lose one's salvation, to at one point say yes to God, and then at another point in one's life to say no in a definitive way to God. So that's one thing. The second thing about faith is we have to understand that faith is both a gift and a virtue. What I mean by that is, no one can give themselves the gift of faith. It's always given, right? That's what a gift is. It's given. And so it's a gift given to those who believe by God himself. Now, God desires that all men come to knowledge of him and come to salvation. But it is also a virtue, which means it's something that has to be cultivated, has to be used, has to be exercised. That's one of the reasons why I say that I do not believe it's possible for anyone to lose their faith. We either choose to give it away or we choose not to use it. Now, to choose to give it away doesn't have to happen all at once. Typically, it's not one massive decision to say, no, I will not serve the Lord, I'll serve something else. Usually, though, it's when we take our heart back from the Lord and give it to something else piece by piece because that's what having, that's what having an idol is, right? It's taking a good thing and making it into an ultimate thing. Taking something that's good, something that's good in this world, whether that be a relationship or a gift or a talent or a work or anything, and putting it at the center where only God should be. And again, we typically don't do that in one big move. We typically do that in very small moves. In fact, okay, so there's this thing called a sand ceremony in some weddings. No, not in Catholic weddings. It's not actually a, a thing that we do in Catholic weddings. But the sand ceremony is um, interesting. You take a glass vase or vase and you have three different kinds of sand. There's the one color sand that represents God, right? So the couple pours that in. And then they have two different color sands for the bride and the groom and they take turns pouring in the sand. So in this glass vase, there's the God-colored sand and then there's the, uh, the couple's sand. It's all mixed together and the idea behind it is, look, we are so mixed together with God as our base that it's impossible for us to be separated. Now, I get it, whatever, we don't do it as Catholics. I get the idea, but the point is actually that it can be separated. And the reality is that's how many marriages end up in shipwreck. Not because at one point they just took the glass and you know, its vase and smashed it against the wall, but because it was like, well, I have my colored sand, I'm just going to take it a little bit back. And the other person says, I'm going to take a little bit of my colored sand back, and I'll take my color, I'll take mine back, and I'll take mine back. And little by little, with little small decision after little small decision, instead of belonging to the other, I'm now mine again. And something similar happens to us when it comes to the Lord. We can say, okay, God, I'm yours. But then what happens is little by little, something else becomes God's chief rival for my heart. Something else becomes God's chief rival for my mind. Something else becomes God's chief rival for my time because we're human beings. And um, <laughs> as someone once said, the human heart is an idol-making factory. We can make idols out of almost anything. Does God have a chief rival in your life? Chances are probably good that there's at least one, if not more than one. If you say, I don't know, how, how do you find that out? Well, here's a quick little test that um, it reveals a lot. It's a very simple test though. And it centers around the fact that we owe God worship. We owe God worship in the Mass. We owe God worship in the Mass at least once a week on Sundays. Okay, so the question is this. When it comes to your weekend, when it comes to your Sunday, is there anything that you would skip Sunday Mass in order to go to this other thing? I talked to a lot of parents. I talked to a lot of people. Sometimes they'll say things like, well, you know, hey, we're, we're in soccer or we're in hockey or whatever the thing is. And there's a tournament over the whole weekend and we're just not able to get to Mass this weekend because we have the tournament going on. And <laughs> one of the things I like to ask um, of parents in that moment is like, okay, so um, is your child going to become, yeah, are they going to the NHL? Are they going to play in the National Hockey League? Like, oh, no, no, they're, they're, no, they're not going to go pro or all. Okay, um, are they on the starting lineup? Like, well, you know, it's important that they're there, you know. So your kid who's not going to go pro, maybe not even on the starting lineup, you're willing to train them, <laughs> you're willing to train them how to go to hell <laughs> when it comes to God. The one, I mean, honestly, one of the very few things we, 
that it's very objectively clear we have to give to God. Sunday mass worship. Oh, but if we have soccer, then you can, whatever, you know. Or if we have hockey, whatever. Or we have, we're going to go visit grandma this weekend, so we can't go to mass. Or we're going to go shopping this weekend, we can't go to mass. Like, listen, that, what that reveals is God has a chief rival. God is a chief rival. Along the hockey line, I live in Minnesota, obviously, so hockey's a big deal. There's a guy, uh, one of our students, um, great guy. His name is Kyle. And a bunch of years ago, Kyle was playing here at the University of Minnesota Duluth the year they won their first national championship in the, in the Frozen Four, you know, the, the hockey uh, competition. And he scored the winning goal in like double overtime to, to close out the game, I mean, to win the whole thing. Now, I know Kyle really well at the time because he was in RCIA. He was becoming Catholic at the time. And so, you know, that night, everyone's going crazy all over the city of Duluth. Like, we finally won this national championship. And so the next day, I called up Kyle. I'm like, dude, congratulations on the winning goal. I mean, that's what you dream about your whole life. His response showed whether God had a chief rival in his life or not. His response was, yeah, it was really cool. You know, a whole team effort, you know. When, he says, but... That, while that was great, he said, nothing will compare to the first time I get to receive Jesus in the Eucharist at the Easter Vigil. <laughs> and I was like, this guy, so good. And, and even right now, this is years later, he's like, yeah, that's the, the he said, the, scoring the winning goal, he went on to play pro, scoring the winning goal, he's like, that's not even in the top 10 events of my life. Number one is receiving Jesus in the Eucharist. Number two is marrying my wife. Number three is my kids. Like, there's so many things. And yet, what are we doing when we say, hey, kids, you know, it's a tournament this weekend. You're in the starting lineup. We can't go to Mass. We have to get you in. Kyle, my friend who actually played pro, would say, that's a bad decision. God doesn't get to have a rival in my life. When, one way to lose faith, we give it away. The other way is to not use it. I would say that, that so many people, quote unquote, lose their faith because they simply choose to not use it, which means we give in to the, the sin of indifference. We just give in to the sin of indifference. We don't care one way or another, and so we just don't act in faith. If we don't live in faith, that faith is going to die. I mean, that's, it's, it's the law of like atrophy, right? Is that if you don't use the muscle, you will lose it. If you don't use your brain, you will lose your capacity to use your brain. If you don't use your body, you will lose your capacity to use your body. And if you and I don't use our faith, we will lose our capacity to use our faith, to live in faith. And this happens, again, through indifference. Um, it doesn't have to happen, again, all at once. It can happen over the course of time. I once spoke with a man, he was in medical school, and he had gone to a Catholic college in his undergrad, and what he got was a bunch of questions without a lot of answers. And this happens, it could be this college, that college, it doesn't matter which college it is. He got a lot of questions, not a lot of answers, but then instead of asking the question, he just was like, I don't know, maybe these questions are really, uh, are really, big and I can't figure them out myself, rather than going to someone who could, he just allowed what I would call like a spirit of cynicism and skepticism to settle upon him. So when he finally talked to me in medical school, he said, I've lost my faith. And uh, yeah, I used to believe really firmly, but now I don't anymore. I had these questions and no one could answer them. He did, I said, well, did you ask anybody? No, no. Well, what are your questions? Remember this very clearly. I said, what are your questions? He couldn't remember what the questions were. All he knew was, I just don't believe anymore. I think that's, that's, a, that's a really bad place to be, right? Because of years of indifference, years of kind of like, I just didn't use it. Now I know I don't believe, but I don't know why. So what do we do? In this moment, I invite all of us to lean in. In this moment, I invite all of us to say, okay, God has given you, if you're watching this, God is calling you to faith. If he hasn't already given it to you, he's calling you, calling you to receive it. If you're watching this, I'm telling you that. If you're watching this, God is calling you to faith. He's giving you the gift of faith. Our decision is to use in it. What I use that to walk in it. What do I mean? Lean into this relationship with God in Jesus Christ. If you identify any rival that God has in your heart, say, "Okay, I'll do whatever I can to eliminate that rival or to augment that rival so the rival no longer has God's position." If I find myself not using it, I'm going to lean in. I'm going to begin by praying. I'm going to live as if I am of someone who has faith. I'm going to walk as someone who has faith. I'm going to talk as someone who has faith. I'm going to be someone who has faith. You guys, you don't have to lose your faith. You can walk in faith. You don't have to give it away. You can give it to Him. And you can experience the joy of what it is to live in faith. For all of us here at Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.